So is, guys, is everyone okay? James, everyone is okay with your family? Bro, you, bro, you are... Yeah. Just... Yeah, just a little bit stressed past because uh, Hope was uh, working already back in the office. Okay. So I am watching Jan Jan uh, on my own and uh, working also at home. So it's very difficult how to juggle work and uh, watching Jan Jan together. So what I'm doing is in the morning, I watch, uh, I watch Jan Jan and then when Hope came in the afternoon, uh, it's my turn to work until uh, late evening. Uh, sometimes finishing around one or two o'clock in the morning. How's uh, how's hope? Hope uh, she's doing fine, pass. I'm okay, pass, and I'll be on the reception tomorrow. <laughs> she was transferred. Yeah, I was transferred to the reception, so I'll be a receptionist now. Okay. But uh, they said it's gonna be temporary, hopefully, and when the company will be back. Uh, will be stable soon, then I'll be back in the production department. So, I pray I will gonna love my job. <laughs> Just enjoy it. <laughs> you know what? Uh, there, is, uh, there is a nice reason why you were put in the reception. Because only yeah. people um, are placed there. If, if a company has a job, <laughs> if the company has a job, only the Beautiful faces are placed in the reception, so <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> how about you? Praise God, praise God. Yeah, praise God. How are you? How are you? Um, ako po, I'm okay. I uh, just received, um, what do you call this? News from Philippines. So one of my cousins, one of my cousins, he's back to work. And there is this uh, rapid test pass. Uh, so he's positive. Okay. This is not, it's not cold, but rapid test will tell you if you need to do the swab test. So, he is positive. So, I, I'm praying na uh, negative yung COVID test niya. Uh, however, because he stayed, um, he is staying with my kids, with my mom, with my dad, with everyone. So, I hope um, we are all, they are all covered in Jesus' name. But hope, work is okay. We'll Everything is okay naman po. Praise yeah, God. Uh, just a few moments ago, I found out that my uncle is also uh, positive. Uh, COVID positive. Uh, he is asymptomatic. And uh, praise God, the kids were negative. But uh, he is positive. So so I, so I in the Philippines, there will be many tests. So we, will, so we are praying uh, that uh, like Larvin, that uh, we're praying that uh, the test will be negative as soon as possible. Thank you. Thanks for things. Aleda, how's uh, everything? I okay, naman pass. I I'm fine pass. Even the office, uh, in terms of work, uh, better than last time because our relationship as colleagues, um, is getting better, and there I feel that. I felt that they are encouraged than before and we're, um, what do you call that? We are embracing this work from home kind of work type. I guess we will work until December, December at home. Home? Well, that's nice. Huh? At home. My wife mm -hmm. will be happy if uh, she will receive a news like that. Mm -hmm. at home. And I think Ate K will also be happy to be working at home. <laughs> <laughs> and How are you garden people? Mm. Yeah. Right. So, everything is okay. Everything is good. Guidance. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Uh, Charles, are you single or or married or you have the kids? Charles. Hi, Charles. Are you? Yeah. You single? Say again. Are you single? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so Charles is our new classmate here. Uh, he, I, I just, uh, uh, I just know him, knew him yesterday. So, praise God for Charles. So he is in uh, Silicon Oasis, and he is excited to be with us physically. So, hi, Charles. <laughs> uh, Ate Nieves, how are you, Ate Nieves? Hello. 
interesting so let's start with the lesson okay okay let's start with the lesson so our lesson for tonight is continuation of our lesson last uh, last week okay so last week we started discussing about the scriptures last week we discussed um, the canon how did the Bible come to be? Uh, where did we get the Old Testament? How did the New Testament come to be? So last week, we, we discussed all those things. Tonight, uh, we will um, discuss um, particularly um, the, the process, okay? how, how the Bible was communicated from the mind of God to the mind of the authors, to our minds. Okay, so that's going to be our topic tonight. Right? So let's start. Okay, so the Westminster Confession of Faith says in chapter 1.7 that all things in the scripture are not alike plain in themselves nor alike clear unto all. Yet those things which are necessary to be known, believed and observed for salvation are so clearly propounded and opened in some place of scripture or other, that not only the learned, but the unlearned in a due use of the ordinary means may attain unto a sufficient understanding of them. So, uh, it is saying that uh, the scriptures are plain. However, it, it's also mysterious. Okay? But uh, the Bible guarantees that um, whatever we need to be lived in, to be known, and to, and, and to observe are so clearly propounded. And they are um, uh, clearly... Um, they, we can uh, receive those things clearly. We can comprehend those things clearly, okay, by ordinary means for us to attain a sufficient understanding of the Bible, okay. So tonight, um, tonight my, my objective is, um, before that, um, I want to um, say this, you know, this verse, okay. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So I want us to notice this, uh, this, uh, no, this verse from 20. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy, no prophecy or, or it can also include all parts of the scripture. So no part of the scripture come, comes from someone's own interpretation. Everything is inspired. Everything is God breathed. Everything comes from the mouth of God. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God 
as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So it means the Bible, uh, we can say that the Bible has two authors, God and man. Okay? Without God, uh, there will be no divine um, source of the message. And without man, okay, without, without the man, uh, the message will not be intelligible for, for human beings as well. Okay, because you know, God has a different language, no? So, so without, so we, we say this, that the Bible is authored by two people. God being the ultimate author and the author, the, the, pen, the, the pen writer, okay, the pen man. Okay, uh, um, he, he wrote the Bible as well. Okay, like Moses, like uh, Joshua, like uh, um, Samuel and all, and all those people. Okay. So our objectives for tonight, we will explain the relationship between divine and human authors. Okay, so what happens from the message when, when God, uh, uh, um, we will define this, uh, these words, revelation. We will define inspiration. We will define illumination. And then we will also um, see the importance of the original authorial intent. What is the original meaning of the word? I have one example, and in my example, okay, you will be surprised okay, uh, uh, later after this. So I have one example, a verse that all of us are always um, claiming as a promise, then we will see if it's really like that. Okay, so, so our goal for this uh, session is for us to have a clear understanding and for us to have um, a desire to know what the author intended okay, when he wrote the passages. So, so, of course, the Bible was written maybe 1,500 years ago, and then we will try to go back to their original context and we will see what is their intention when they were writing the text. Because our definition is from God to man to us, from God to the author to, the, uh, to us. So for us to arrive at a good interpretation, we have to go back to the context where the writer is writing the passages, the Bible, for us to know what the Lord wants us to know today. Okay, so from that, no? So, uh, so I have a diagram here, okay, a very simple diagram. So we will see that the source of the message is God, okay? Then the message will be communicated to man through revelation that we will define later what's a revelation. Then this revelation um, um, will be um, will be produced in writings that, that uh, through inspiration. Okay. Then, then the inspired word of God um, will be interpreted by us through illumination. Okay. So, so we will see the, these things: God, the author, and us. Okay. So God revealed the message to the authors. The authors wrote the message in an inspired manner. Uh, even, the, even the ideas, even the numbers there, even the correct, um, even, the, uh, even the, correct, uh, the correct use of word. Okay, so we will discuss later now. So, uh, so define revelation, okay? Revelation, these are the thoughts in God's mind. Okay? These are the thoughts. These are the things he wants us to know, okay? They are divinely authoritative and is conveyed objectively through the Bible. So revelations are the thoughts in God's mind that he desires for us to know. Okay? That's the definition. Those are um, divinely authoritative because it comes from the mind of God and the source of um, uh, the source of our um, uh, verification is the, is the Bible, the Word of God. Okay, so there are two types of revelation. The first one is a general revelation. Uh, it is the revealing of God's greatness through His creation. Okay, so um, 
Guys, even without the Bible, we can say that there is God. Amen? Amen. Okay? How? By looking at the creation, by looking at nature. So for example, uh, in Psalms 19, one says there, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. So even if there is no Bible, we can say that there is God just by looking outside, looking at the stars, the 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 beauty of the stars, okay, the complexity of the galaxies, the the complexity of the nature, by looking at the the different type of of animals, different kinds of flowers, different kinds of of birds, of animals, of fish, of trees, of plants, and all, and also by looking at you, okay, by looking at you, you will know that there must be a God for for uh, uh, for you know, for you to be created as beautiful as that there should be someone who is super intended uh, supervising or super super ano super um, intending the creation of you okay because you know what you are a very complex being even the most basic part of your body is very is very is very complex okay so so uh when we look at the nature when we look at you okay when we look at your son daughters and the plants and and the and the nature and everything there must be a god so 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 this is a type of revelation this is called general revelation without the bible we can we can um, we can um, accurately say that there is god also through our conscience no the bible says in romans uh, 2 40, 16, um, they show that the word of the law is written on their hearts while their conscience also bears witness. So, so even without the Bible, um, our conscience speaks moral standards. So even without the Bible, we know what is right and what is wrong. Because the Lord, because God, uh, God wrote those things in, in our hearts. Okay, we know that abortion is wrong. We know that... Uh, that murder is wrong, we know that lying is wrong, we know that rape is wrong, uh, even without the Bible saying those things, okay, because it, uh, because the Lord reveals it to us, okay, um, uh, I, um, uh, in our hearts, even countries um, that, that they say they are atheistic, um, they know these things, okay, they know these things, because, um, I, I believe it is part of our humanity that the Lord uh, puts his, mor his morality in our lives. That even without the Bible speaking, we will know what is right and what is wrong. So, so this is called general revelation. Okay? Um, the revealing of God's greatness or God's nature or God's truth through his creation. Okay? So I hope everyone, whenever you see something in the nature, you will appreciate the greatness of God. Okay. Second one. Okay. If there is a, a, a general, there is also specific or particular revelation. Okay. It is the revealing of God's glory through the suspension of the nature of the natural order. So the first one we can call that uh, natural revelation. This one is supernatural revelation. So these are revelation um, um, that 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 are revealed um, through the um, suspension of natural laws, natural order. For example, okay. For example, miracles. Um, people experience miracles every day. I experience miracles, and for sure, you have experienced miracles. And you will never think that your miracles are are product by nature because you believe that those miracles are impossible to be to be um, uh, to be done okay you cannot you cannot easily impossibility means you cannot easily duplicate it okay it will really uh, it, it's almost impossible that duplication of it is almost impossible and sometimes uh, I, I in the philippines i i know this couple uh, um they uh, no, um they had um the wife um um her ovaries were removed okay 
and they still prayed for a child and we don't know what happened but uh, but uh, I, a miracle happened and and this ovary less woman uh, conceived a child okay uh, this this is one of the miracles that I have experienced and I don't know how this can happen and I know this can only happen because our God is God of the impossible amen diba? amen so number two dreams visions and direct communication so so sometimes God uh, visits us in our dreams sometimes God gives us vision sometimes God talks to us uh, audibly we hear his still small voice so God reveals himself through those things no and of course God revealed himself through his son okay, John uh, John 1 1 say that uh, um, in the beginning was the word and the word was uh, with God and the word was God and John, John 1 14 and the word was made flesh so God's revelation was made into flesh through his son and also the son says in the book of John as well that he came so he can reveal the father okay Jesus one of the mission statement of Jesus one of the purpose of Jesus why he came is so that he can reveal the father to us okay we, we have to note that um, the idea of God being a father is so foreign in the Old Testament and it was only made known to us through Jesus Christ Jesus is the um, the, uh, the the perfect model perfect example of who god is okay um, he is at, he is in the nature he is a god who came to earth and he was revealed to us okay so yon so so when we study christ we will uh, we receive also revelation of god and lastly the scriptures the scriptures are uh, are uh, we can say the um, the way we the way where we study God, okay? So, yeah, so, so scriptures are um, part of the specific revelation, okay? So, guys, uh, please take uh, please take note if you have questions, and later if you have questions, we will discuss all those things, okay? Please, please, okay? Please spare me from any troubles tonight, amen. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so first. So that's revelation from God to man. Okay, so revelation. Uh, it is revealed through nature, uh, through our conscience. It can also be revealed through miracles, through visions, through dreams, through Jesus Christ, and through uh, the scriptures. Then from, from the authors, how... How did the authors um, come about? Okay, how did the authors um, I know, uh, chose the right words? Okay, uh, uh, those things. So we will talk about inspiration. Inspiration. These are the thoughts revealed by God in the author's mind. Okay, so, so inspiration are the thoughts revealed by God in the author's mind. That's the definition. This is the word of God, wherein God superintended that the human authors, so that by using their own personalities and other personal factors, they composed and recorded God's word. So God's, so God used um, the style, the writing style. God used the personality. God used, um, God used um, um, the context. God used the uh, the person's background, okay, uh, uh, when he chose that person. And then this person, um, I, I want to read this one, um, that all, inspir all inspiration is verbal. It means um, the process actually involves language and not just the conveyance of ideas. So, so what I mean to say is when God revealed the words, okay, so, and so, so, it, so, it is uh, sometimes it is confusing, but you have to understand like this. I believe it is combination of faith and grace. So God gives the grace, God gives the revelation, but but human beings acquire it 
okay, acquire it you, uh, uh, um, using their own intellect, using their own background, using their own um, style, using their own uh, capacity. If they are doctors, then, uh, for example, the book of Luke, okay? Since Luke is a doctor, so, so, uh, so you will see that he is very detailed, that he spoke, that he's the son of man, so things like that. And also, when I say verbal, it means that God did not just reveal the idea, but God revealed the words to be used. Okay? So, for example, uh, for example, God wants us to know about salvation. So, he did, so he did not say, uh, uh, John, can you write about salvation? No. Okay. What happened was God revealed to John even the words to say. Okay, so it's verbal, okay? So, so even the right words, what to put. Sometimes you will see in the Bible, there are repetitions. Sometimes you will see, uh, 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 you will see uh, uh, the author is jumping from one thought to, uh, to the other. So God is using all of those things, okay? Uh, he, he is using all of those things so that we can have the Bible right now. So that is called inspiration. So inspiration are God's thoughts translated to the minds of the authors, okay? Uh, it includes verbal. So, so the numbers in the Bible, um, the place in the Bible, um, the, 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 the names in the Bible, the happiness in the Bible, they are, they are very carefully chosen by God, okay? So as to produce a divinely authoritative scriptures. So that's inspiration, okay? So 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 17. All scriptures is breathed, by, is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So all scriptures are I breathe. It came out from, from the mouth of God. It came from, from the mind of God. Okay? So, so uh, we say that the, all the scriptures are God's words. But it's also accurate to say that uh, God, uh, that the scriptures are also um, uh, human words. Okay? All you, like Jesus, there is a, he is fully human. He is, he is fully human and he is fully God. So, so like that, no? So, uh, so also in our life, okay, um, there is faith, there is grace, there is, there is God part, there is human part. So same with the scriptures. God moved, also human moved in order for us to have a Bible. Okay. Second Peter 1, 19-21, same, same, ano, same verse. But I want to highlight this, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. Nothing, okay? Um, though they are humans' words, okay, it they didn't come from the author's human interpretation. Rather, it came through divine revelation. No prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, okay, but men spoke from God as they were carried, okay, carried. It means uh, as they were as as they were dragged. By the Holy Spirit, okay. It means, it means there is, uh, um, it means the human beings are free to choose the words they want to choose, but at the same time, God is controlling them. So, that, so uh, it's a, it's a little bit confusing, but uh, but uh, you understand, okay. I am free to choose the right. I am free to choose the words I want to say, but God is controlling every words. So that there will be no mistake, so that the thought are are complete and all. So illumination, okay. So from God to man is revelation. From man to the Bible is called inspiration. Then from the Bible to us is called illumination. Okay, so that's the flow. From God to the author is called revelation. Then from the author to us is called inspiration. Then from the Bible, no, no, sorry. From the author to the Bible is called inspiration. Then from us, from the 
Bible to us is called illumination. I wanna, I wanna submit that John did not know that we will read the Bible today. Okay, they they don't have the idea. Okay, um, um, when Matthew wrote Matthew, he didn't know that I am going to read Matthew today. Okay, so so uh, so he didn't know. They, they don't have any idea that I will be reading the Bible. They don't know you will be reading the Bible now. It's very important that when we interpret the Bible, we are interpreting it the way the authors intended it to be. Okay, and it's called illumination. Okay, um, um, I will define it later. No, this one. Okay, these are the thoughts in our minds as we interpret the scriptures. Okay, so illumination are the thoughts in our minds. So, so the, so the Bible was written hundreds of years ago. And what comes out when we interpret it is called illumination. Uh, um, sometimes there is a problem because uh, many people did not have the same interpretations. Okay? Sometimes my interpretation is different from another pastor's interpretation. However, however I want to suggest that, uh, that only one of us uh, either both of us are wrong or only one of us are correct or no one of us are correct. Yeah, okay. Either both of us are wrong or only one are wrong. But but uh, no, but uh, we but uh, it should not be that both of us are correct. Okay? Because because in the Bible there is only one interpretation, okay? This uh Illumination is the internal work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer in which the meaning and the personal life application of scriptures are clarified. So, so when we read the Bible, we ask the agency of the Holy Spirit to explain it to us, okay? So that our understanding will, will not be far from its original meaning. So we ask God to really lay down to us what the message is. We ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate us, to, to enlighten us, to, to give us understanding. When we, that's why when we read the Bible, we really seek God. We really seek the Holy Spirit to explain to us what needs to be understood. It's called illumination. No? Okay? But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So, key word here is teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things. That is his job. He is our helper. Okay? He will teach us all things. John 16, 30 to 14, when the Spirit of truth he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So the Holy Spirit role is to illuminate us. Okay? So, uh, so the Bible was written. Um, um, thousands of years ago. And the only way for us to fully understand what the Bible is saying is for the writer to tell it again to us. For the Holy Spirit to speak it again to us as fresh as the original uh, author experienced it. So without the Holy Spirit, we will never have a good understanding. Okay? So the Holy Spirit role is to is to refresh us, is to is to reveal it to us, just as the way it was revealed to the authors originally. That is illumination. Okay. So. Okay. So uh, the relationship between the three, revelation versus illumination. Revelation is God is given by God to all to all. Revelation is given by God to all. Okay, whereas illumination is the giving of help to believers 
to understand. So, for example, um, um, God, um, God can reveal Himself to every person in the whole world through. Uh, sometimes He does that through uh, general revelation. Sometimes He does that through specific. But you know what? But you know, sometimes no. Uh, for for example, uh, person A and person B, they hear the same message, but they have different response. Person A believe, person B did not believe, because the problem was illumination. No, so they have the same message. They they are living in the same world. They are they, they can see the same stars. They can see the they can see. They can see they, they can read the Bible, but but sometimes sometimes unless until something is enlightened to us, okay, we will not we, we will not we will not believe. No, that's that's why that, that's why there are many responses. No, so so revelation illumination. Okay, so revelation concerns the origin and giving of the truth from God to man. Inspiration. Relates to the reception and recording of the truth from God to the Bible, uh, from man to the Bible. Illumination focuses on the apprehension and understanding of the truth from the Bible to our minds. Okay, so what is interpretation? Interpretation is the science of. Okay, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Hermeneutics is the science. Of interpreting a text, okay. So yon. So so when so whenever we interpret a text, uh, it, we call it also uh, exegesis, to exegete, to interpret. Okay, we are doing hermeneutics. Okay, so when we interpret, it helps us when we study the original translation of the passage, the context, the historical background, and the audience. Okay, when the passage was was already originally written so when we are reading the passage it helps us when we when we study uh, the greek language or the hebrew language okay so we don't just read the text no so i, I i'm hoping that uh, that all of you will be diligent in studying the word no starting from now no so uh, so you will you will uh, 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 what i do okay uh, experience so what i do uh, uh, I will read the Bible. I'll pray. Okay. Uh, I will. Uh, I will seek God to for God to give me an illumination. Then I will consult some commentaries. If uh, if if what my if, if what I mean uh, is also the same as uh, their uh, their another uh, uh, the revelation of God to them. I will also consult uh, the strong Bible sometimes, the context. Okay, I will also consult uh, um, the Greek language. Also, I have a dictionary, so all those things. So whenever I prepare a sermon, I do that. No, so so I I I read I, I read the Bible. I understand the context. What what could uh, John be feeling that time when he is writing that? What is the context? What what are, what is what are the happenings? What are the historical backgrounds? All those things. Now, when we read all those things, when we study all those things, okay, um, there can only be one interpretation, okay, but applications may vary. So there should uh, there is one there is one interpretation, but applications can differ, okay, um, and I will explain it later. No, this one, for example, this verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope, okay? All of us know this verse. We like this verse. We memorize this verse and we quote this verse, no? And, uh, and uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I will apologize if I will disappoint some people tonight no actually i was also surprised when i hear this from from uh, from my uh, from uh, my professor but uh, but uh, um um i have i have heard this on on separate occasions from different professors 
that this verse does not uh, is not intended to us. Sometimes we use this verse, no? Um, the, the, Lord, the Lord has plans. The Lord has blah blah blah. The Lord has uh, has plans for me. And and the professor said it is wrong for us to really claim this promise because of the following reasons. No, the context. No, context. This verse tells us the letter contained in the chapter. Okay, when the Israelites were taken by King Nebuchadnezzar from Jerusalem to Babylon. So this chapter was written when the Israelites were in exile in Babylon. Okay? In Jeremiah 29.1, sorry, it's, it's 1. Jeremiah 29.1. These are the words of the letter. These are the words of the letter that Jeremiah, the prophet, sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exiles and to, and to the priests the prophets and the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So first, the letter was intended to all the Israelites who were in exile in Babylon. Okay, that's the first context. Second one, God is speaking to all the Israelites in Babylon as a whole, not as individuals. Okay, so the, the use of you there in the language is not individual per se but it is used as a group of people so the so uh, uh, when we say uh, for the lord no verse for the, for i know the plans i have for you the you there is a group of people not really individual no? so so it is wrong for us to take this verse and apply it directly and solely to our individual lives okay God put Israel in captivity because of their sin. So it means, uh, so the, the point is, if we will claim this verse as our own, okay, uh, it means we are also putting ourselves in the context of the Israelites, that they are sinning and they are in exile. So, so, so the passage is actually uh, very different from what we can experience right now. No? So that time they are in exile because of their sins. And, and they were in exile for 70 years. Okay? And I want to read 24, 29, 49. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. God, uh, build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I didn't send them, declares the Lord. The Lord, the Lord wants the people of Israel through the writings of Jeremiah. Um, the Lord wants them to be contented in their life in uh, in exile because you know the exile was the, the exile will be very very long years. Okay, at least seventy years of of years, no. And, and because of that, uh, God is saying uh, it's going to be a long stay in Babylon. So, so, uh, so uh, you have to marry their people, you have to eat their, their food, etc., etc. No? And, and, but, but God is saying, God is saying, do not, but do not believe, do not believe um, their, uh, their prophets and all. That's why Daniel, that's why Daniel uh, becomes became very strong. Okay, in in saying no to the desires of Nebuchadnezzar, no? So those things are contemporary. Okay. So our use of Jeremiah 2011 completely ignores this historical context. This passage was written to a nation that had been torn from its home to live in a foreign land. The verse was written to a 21st century 
middle class citizen who needs help with her job interview. If anyone needed hope, it was the Israelites in captivity. So, so we take this verse and we say, the Lord has planned for me, give me hope, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, 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 and, 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 and many scholars are saying that it is wrong for us to do that. Okay. Because that's not the original intent of the author. We should take from this that God doesn't immediately rescue someone from suffering and hardship. Christians like to think Jeremiah 11 means they will get a quick fix for all their problems. Now, if you use this verse 2011 because you believe that God will give you a quick fix for your problem, then, then, then it's wrong application because we have learned that um, it took 70 years for them in captivity. So what God is telling them when they when God used this verse is, um, you have to wait. You have to wait, okay? You have to endure. You have to persevere. Because I have good plans for you. I have good hopes for you. Not to harm you. Not to, not to give you a bad future. So, so, so it is wrong for us to claim this promise when we want God to give a quick fix in our problems. No? So, yeah, so, but if 70 years in, in captivity is anything to you, to go by. God doesn't always work that way. Sometimes he may give an immediate fix to a problem, but most of the time it requires patience on our part. So don't go looking for instant problem solving techniques. Be content in your suffering, trusting in God and his faithfulness. So this is the message. No? So this verse says that God has a restoration plan. So what this plan... What this verse is saying is God has a restoration plan. God has a good plan. God has a plan for those people in, in Israel. Okay, so, so God has a plan to restore them. God has a plan to deliver them. God has a plan to bring them to, back to Israel. But it will take some time. Okay, so, so for us to interpret it, okay, so we can say, the plan of God was not to destroy Israel, but to punish them for their wickedness and then to restore them to, to their land. God's restoration is described in Jeremiah 30 to 33. And the historical record of Israel's restoration is found in the books of Israel and Nehemiah. The Lord was going to give Israel a future and a hope with plans for welfare and not for evil. He wants the nation of Israel, okay, uh, uh, to be delivered, uh, to, to be restored, to bring them all back to their homeland. The ultimate plan of God is redemption. He wants to reconcile himself with the sinful world. That's why Jesus came to earth, lived among us, died on the cross, and rose again. God declared the Messiah would come from David's line in the tribe of Judah. If Israel had perished in Babylon, then God would have been a liar, which is impossible, for it is impossible for God to lie. Now, okay, so that's the interpretation. So the verse is, the verse is Jeremiah 20, 11. Okay, so, so what happens, we always interpret it uh, like uh, God has good plan for us, uh, God has a plan for me, etc., etc. God, uh, God wants me to be happy, and all those things, no? The interpretation is God has a plan, but the plan is to restore and redeem the people of Israel. Okay? Um, um, to, to restore them back to the land. Now, that's the interpretation. The interpretation is God said those words to the nation of Israel, not to us, okay? To encourage them by giving them hope and by giving them something to hold on to, that though their stay in Babylon will be 70 years, they don't need to worry because God will come back and, and restore them back to the land. Now, when we read those words, okay, what, when we read those words, how can we apply those words to our lives? That's the question. One interpretation and many application. And this is my application. This is for me. This is what... This is my application. Okay? 
we can take from uh, Jeremiah 2011, and the passage it resides in that God does have a great plan for humanity. Okay? God has a great plan for humanity. This passage should not be used to talk about any individual plan God may have for our lives. In the end, what job we have, who we marry, and where we live is insignificant compared to God's great plan of redemption. Right now, we reside in a sinful world that's not easy to live in, just as the Israelites had to endure captivity in Babylon. So we must endure our time here on earth. Okay? God's uh, good, uh, no. God won't pluck us off the planet immediately. But after we have finished our time here. Okay? So, so, so my application is God has a plan for, for all of us. God has a plan for me, yes, but, but, but most significantly, God has a plan for every person. And that plan is to bring us, okay, to bring us back to Him. To bring us back to Him in a very intimate relationship and fellowship. Okay? And, and God has a plan of redemption to all of us. Now, now uh, uh, because the context before, um, when, when God said those words, it took 70 years uh, uh, before the Israelites finally came back to the, to the land, then it can also apply to me in my problem. Sometimes, sometimes my problem will not go away as fast as I want to be. But I have to hold on because God's plan for me, because God has a plan for me, God's of uh, God's of uh, no, a good plan for my welfare and not of evil. So do, like that. No? So this one also. Okay. So it shows as God is faithful to His promises. He will resurrect our bodies and bring us into sinless eternity with Himself. We can trust Him and be content in our present trials. This world is sinful and we wage war against our sinful flesh daily. But this struggle will not last forever as Jesus Christ has made a way into eternity with God. The modern interpretation is, uh, the modern interpretation misses so much rich truth that gives us a greater hope than any this world can offer. This verse is not about us, but it reveals us, it reveals to us the amazing hope we have in Christ Jesus. So the modern interpretation, okay, if we have a problem and we quote this to our problem, okay, it's, I mean, the effect is it's good. It's, it, it is good. It's encouraging, but it is not unfaithful to the text. Okay, that's the point, no? So that's the point. So that's the end, no? So, uh, so, that, so my point is uh, when we when we claim Jeremiah 2011 to our lives, okay, um, um, it may encourage you for sure because it's the word of God. However, it is not a faithful interpretation of the text. And if you will be faithful, you will have a richer meaning, a richer understanding of the text. It is not just, oh, the Lord has planned for me. Okay? I lost my job. The Lord has planned for me. Okay? It, it is not just like that. There is a deeper meaning to that. Deeper meaning is I lost my job right now, but I don't need to worry, okay? Because I I need to be patient with God, because though this will this will take long, I believe God has a plan of redemption, and God has a plan of restoration in my life. That's the correct way of interpreting the text. Praise God. Ooh, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Then let's uh, talk after. Ooh. Lord, thank you so much, God, for tonight. And thank you, God, for your message. I hope, Lord God, that uh, we learned something powerful this evening. And I hope, Lord God, that um, um, our understanding of the Bible will grow deeper, Lord. I hope, God, that we will not just read the Bible just like we read the newspaper or read the magazine, or read the Wikipedia, or read the Facebook. Lord, I pray God that we will put so much respect and so much regard to the Bible, that we will treat it as a treasure that we have to cherish of our lives, God. I pray that, that we will have 
a desire to study your words, God. To study the meaning, what you want us to know. Because, Lord God, Lord, if we will just study it, Lord God, uh, we will just have a superficial understanding of what you want us to learn. But, Lord, when we understand fully, we will know the, the very heart of your heart. So, Lord, we repent, God, for the times we are not really studying carefully. And we ask for forgiveness, God. And we pray you will give us, Lord, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give us the understanding of the Holy Spirit so we can understand the word of God, Lord, fully and apply it fully. Because, Lord God, good interpretation can lead us into good application. And thank you so much, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God, okay? Praise God. I, I will uh, end the recording.